So Firepower Next Generation Firewall has some of the same configuration components and a few subtle differences behind the hood. So let's go ahead and take a look at this quickly. Uh, VPN clients, we've got no self-signed certificate generated by default, which was the case on the ASA, but we do have the ability to configure a persistent self-signed certificate, which is okay for lab use, but really a PKI provision certificate is what's recommended. We don't want users to be used to clicking through certificate errors. It's gonna cause us more problems in the long run. So we'll have to wind up reversing all those bad habits that we reinforce. Looking at the client authentication, uh, the Cisco Firepower does not support local user database. So they really want you using that external AAA radius or an Active Directory or LDAP server. As far as Cisco AnyConnect users go, they select the connection profile from the selection menu using the group URL. Uh, alternatively, the default web VPN group needs to be configured with a AAA server and it's gonna be empty by default. So some things just a touch different. Again, that comes back to not having a local user database. Uh, the AnyConnect SSL VPN needs to assign an IP address to the client. It's typically gonna be a private address. This is the same requirement that we had uh, with the ASA. And from the user's perspective, it's not gonna look a whole lot different. That IP address assignment can come from a connection profile or local pool, which is kind of nice. The IP addresses can be configured, just not the user accounts. Uh, we do have support to relay to a DHCP server, make a request on behalf of that user, and we can use a local pool uh, as well as have a IP address that's assigned within the uh, AAA server. Split tunneling, not a new concept. We discussed this in the last module. So just as before, we can allow some traffic to bypass the tunnel. So if you wanna to go to the internet, if you wanna stream music while you work, you'd be streaming all that music directly from the streaming server, maybe Spotify, uh, not taking all that traffic, bringing it up to headquarters, and then pushing it back to the VPN. Again, this takes a lot of load off of the head end. It doesn't sound like much for one user, but if you've got hundreds of users or thousands of users or tens of thousands of users, you can imagine how that's gonna uh, scale. It's gonna, <laughs> it's gonna be very difficult to handle it all. Um, so the downside is that there's no access control for non-tunnel destinations. So not really a perfect solution for split tunneling. It's just a matter of um, what really fits your business the best. So the access control is just gonna be managed by your access control policies. Uh, access control can additionally be implemented by configuring access list filters, which are set inside of the group policy. In this example, they've got the access list filter dropdown set and they're referencing partners access. That's just the name of their ACL. Uh, this ACL is gonna be applied to our VPN users. So the actual configuration steps are pretty straightforward. We create our mode access VPN policy by beginning with a connection profile. Uh, we can upload and select the AnyConnect image. Remember there's different images uh, for Windows, Linux, and OS X. If we're setting this up, maybe visit Cisco's website and download our agents for the various operating systems that we want to support. Next, enable the VPN services on a security zone. So just like the ASA where we turn it on on, a, on the outside interface, in this case, we'll turn it on for the outside zone. Additionally, select and enroll with the PKI, uh, public PKI that's gonna give us a digital certificate. If necessary and typically preferred, we would configure NAT exemption to make sure traffic going through the uh, next generation firewall doesn't get NATed. And then finally, allow VPN traffic within, uh, with inside the ACP. So here's our connection profile being created on uh, next generation firewall, Firepower. And it looks very similar in terms of the things we have to define. A connection profile, sure. An authentication method. Authentication server, here, just pointing to ICE. Um, additionally, where is our IP address gonna come from? These are the same things that we had to define. We have them all within a GUI. It should feel very familiar. Now, coming over here, if we dig down to the options a bit, you'll see that we've got capabilities to set split tunneling for both v4 and v6. And we've got lists here that can define what should actually be uh, split. So what should go through the tunnel? Anything to our private network. Think about an ACL, permit and deny. So anything that's denied would not go through the tunnel. Additionally, we can do uh, split DNS. 
Split DNS means send certain DNS queries through the tunnel, other ones send them out to the public internet. Here we see the AnyConnect client image being specified. So we would go to Cisco's website, we can go ahead and download uh, the various images. Once we uh, download them, they'll be stored inside of the ASA. Here we see the file name, and then when users connect, there's a negotiation that occurs where the user tells the head end what their image version is, and they can go ahead and get updates provisioned from our ASA. As far as enabling VPN services on a security zone, we just select the security zone here from a drop down box. So the zone is called out zone, and you can see here that we've selected enable DTLS on the member interface, giving us support to do TLS over UDP on port 443. Below, you see the device certificate. Do you want to use self-signed, or do you have a, you know, a legit certificate from a, from a real CA server? In that case, we could go ahead and select it here. I hope there's no questions at this point on NAT exemption. Uh, NAT exemption was, again, just saying that certain traffic should not be NATed. What do we want to NAT? Everything. Anytime we see traffic going from the inter inter uh, our internal network to the outside, NAT it. And they go, are you sure? I go, well, if it's going from the inside to the VPN pool, don't NAT. See, this is, remember, the order of operations. Our most specific rules go up top. So if it's going from the in zone to the out zone, well, that's easy enough. But specifically, from the inside network to the VPN pool, we want to make sure it comes out from the inside network to the VPN pool. Whereas, if it was coming from inside network going anywhere, we want to change that source IP to the interface that's on our outside, uh, the IP address of our outside interface. So kind of like a typical PAT configuration. So there's your generic PAT rule. Here's our specific NAT exemption rule. And then again, making sure that uh, our VPN traffic is going to be allowed from within. And last but not least, we've got our troubleshooting. So if we set this up in firepower, it doesn't seem to kick off. First thing to, to test is our TLS uh, slash SSL configuration. Is it enabled? And do we have compatible ciphers on both ends, both the browser and the server, uh, server being the firepower device? If SSL looks good, what's going on with user authentication? If that looks good, what's going on with groups? If that looks good, were we actually assigned an IP address? If so, the VPN should be established. Sometimes it's just a question of, is it working like it should be? Um, if my tunnel's up and it doesn't seem to be working correctly, we can check on split tunneling. We can verify uh, that the traffic should be permitted by looking at our filters. We can see if the uh, traffic is being NATed. Sometimes it's not, uh, sometimes it is being NATed and it shouldn't be. So just double check and make sure we have a NAT exemption. And then ultimately, this is kind of funny that it's the last thing that we check again, but routing. If we're not routing traffic to the right interface, None of the other fancy stuff is going to happen afterwards, where we start encrypting it, encapsulating it, and uh, you know, possibly you know, fragmenting it and doing, doing things in slick ways. Uh, we've got to at least get it to the right interface first. So if, if it is getting to the right interface, if our split tunneling is configured, our tunnel should be up, and we should have traffic flow.